Welcome back to the shop. There goes my little brother. He hurt his back so he can't run. So we got him on film there, at least his back. So he built this this workbench that goes right on top of my old bar. So which which is really neat. It, it, and it's it's high. But I'm six foot two, and this is like belly up to the bar, perfect height for me. So I think Clay's made a good addition here. And and this is a very interesting work surface because these are the underside of a treadmill. So this is some sort of a high density poly, poly whatever, HDPE kind of stuff. I think some low friction type stuff, almost like Delrin. And I assume that these were quite thick. Clay, were they thick when they were new? Yeah, that's all the same. So, so this was thick, and then over time it wore down. No, 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 no. Oh no. No, it's um, they, they're double-sided, and you can see some of the um, some of the scratches that occur on these, and then they might well might well wear through this coating. But um, but ultimately they got a little bit too much wear. We decided to make a big change at the gym, get new decks for everything. So these were um, these were up for grabs, and uh, here they are. All right, so he's yeah. The, right now we're looking at two and a half, and he's got a couple more over there. But it's a neat work surface. It's, it's it's very tough, from what I can tell. But it but it's sort of a, a coating on top of what looks like the uh, MDF type of or a high density fiberboard. I don't know if they make a HDF. But anyway, it's it seems a little thicker than your regular MDF. So that's a neat work surface. And and I got to thinking. I said we need a vise for this. So let me show you a couple of vices that we have here. So so this vice has been around forever. It's a piece of crap. It's fallen apart. There's no fixing it. There's we had you know, welded it down to the base here, and it's just just a made in China junker. And it, it never really worked well. It was novel because it had the the you could flip it over and put a piece of pipe in there. But you know, just always battling with this junker. So let me take you over to another vice. This is not a spectacular specimen either, but in you know, it's better than the other one, and I. I had taken this and mounted it to a 25 pound weight or maybe a 30 pound weight but I like this I, I've seen many other people that like to hook it down to wood and wood makes sense because you can just clamp it down but here this workbench isn't really conducive to that because the lip is so close to the edge that's a this is a bowling alley floor so anyway I was at the there I go saying anyway <laughs> so I went to the flea market this morning and I found a, a vice to go on my little brother's workbench here it is, this monster. It needs a retaining clip, but I think this is just, yeah, I thought it was a Christmas ornament at first. It can't be an inch and a half across. It doesn't have a maker's mark on it or anything, but I figure that's just gonna be a hoot to restore. So I'm gonna try to get some video of restoring this, and maybe, maybe we'll see if we can't fabricate the little clip that goes in the back. We'll bring this over to Clay's workbench, disassemble it, get a better look at what we have. And, and I was having some trouble trying to get this unscrewed. I don't think that I want to tempt fate and, and force this out because I don't have my thread file. Typically a thread file or a, I could maybe put a die on here and try to open this up a little bit. But because this is more of a novelty than anything, I don't want to break it. And I don't have all day to sit back and tinker around with stuff. So I'm just going to clean it up like this. I think it'll come out real, real nice. So let's bring this over to the wire wheel, get it cleaned up. So yesterday I was watching Ben Maul's video. If you haven't seen Ben's channel, go check it out. It's Ben Maul. I'll put it, uh, his name up here. He's got a great channel, and, and I really enjoy his content. And he said something, and, and, and Ben, please, you know, don't take this as a criticism, but but I just want to point out, he said something that was exactly correct, but, but I just want to sort of elaborate on it. He had taken a wire wheel, a wire brush for a drill, and a drill spins at like 2,000 RPMs or something like that, and chucked it in a die grinder and it started flying apart and that is extremely dangerous. That is, you know, just a recipe for disaster. So Ben is completely right saying, you know, do not chuck a drill rated wire brush in a die grinder. However, 
a wire brush and a die grinder. Uh, the, the appropriate wire brush is an indispensable tool. They come in fine grits, they come in coarse grits, they come in knotted, really coarse grits, they come potted in epoxy so that they don't fly everywhere if you had like a cylinder bore or something like that, you, you didn't want wires flying out everywhere. Uh, you know, these are all sorts of shapes and sizes, almost anything you can think of. But be very careful to, to buy drill rated stuff. And, and, and here's my recommendation. Take it for what you will. Do not buy the drill rated wire bits. Only buy the stuff that, that is rated for the, the high RPM, the 24,000. And I believe that the, the industry is starting to correct itself in that the most of the drill rated bits are starting to come with this sort of hexagon sided like a, like you'd fit it a normal drill. Not not real happy with this DeWalt anyway. Different story. So anyway, Ben, great channel. Love the comments and all, but I just want to amend amend your statement there by saying that you know there is a time and a place for the appropriate wire wheel. And I'm going to use that here because I can't get in here with the with the big wire wheel. So I'm going to try an assortment of wire wheels and get this cleaned up. So. All right, so there it is. There's a little vise. It actually is too small to fit on the new workbench. There's not enough gap there for now. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and get the workbench situated before I figure out if I'm actually going to modify it. Well, what I am missing is I need the cap to go on the back here. And I tried to fabricate one with the lathe and split this little plug and sort of make it like a the foot to a, a regular C-clamp. But that didn't quite work out. So I'm going to have to get some, some more material and uh, do that another day. But anyway, this is a fun little project, so I just want to get some content up and goof around on the shop. It's, it's fun. I, I'm happy to be back working on tools and not making trips to the dump. So have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. I almost forgot. The, the vice came from the flea market. Uh, I went this morning and I picked up a music stand for my father, and then I've got this, this pretty good size alligator wrench. Again, not exactly sure. I think somebody said they're good for gas fittings or something like that but anyway I couldn't pass it up and then this this sort of it's got the rubber grips on it so I don't know if it has anything to do with forging or whatnot I think it might be for picking up a the lid on a Dutch oven I, I, I don't know if anybody knows what that would be for go ahead and put it in the comments I'd, I'd really like to know but uh, anyway that's part of my flea market find so thanks again have a good weekend